tua maica. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You were the mighty man of war. You were the lion of Judah. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Yahweh. That is your name, Lord Jesus. Come and do what only you can do. Thank you, Jesus. You're the father to the fatherless. You're the mother to the motherless. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The husband to the widow. You're the help to the helpless. Thank you, Lord. My healer. My healer. My deliverer. My deliverer. Come and do. Come and do. What only you can do, Lord. You're the way maker. You are the way maker, Lord. You are the mountain mover, Lord. You raise the Hallelujah. To make the barren you make the barren to be fruitful, oh God. Yeah. Glorious God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come and do what only you can do. Thank you, Lord. Hey, Katabo Shata. We bow down. We worship you, Jesus. You are Yahweh, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come and do what only you can do. Oh, yes. He's our worship, Lord. <laughs> we give you praise Abba Father Thank you for another beautiful day Today is Monday the 19th day in the month of December We give God praise for the beginning of another week For the beginning of another day Our God has been so good to us We give him praise We thank him for the gift of life we thank him for his mercy. We thank him for his loving kindness that never fails. The Bible says they are new every morning. Even if you don't feel new, just know that it's a new day. And what God has for you is a brand new mercy. In case you have failed in some places before now, be rest assured. What God is going to give you is a brand new mercy that will make you to bounce back. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Our God has been careful to send his words to us. And we are looking at the topic this morning. What the Lord has been doing. He has been sending forth with words. We are looking at the topic. Why God sends his word. The understanding of why God sends his word will show us the extent of God's love for us. The psalmist came to a point he had to ask, what is man that you are mindful of him? He asked the question, what is the son of man that you take notice of him? And that is God. Clearly, God is mindful of us. Hallelujah. He cares about us. He longs for us to come to the point where we realize, I sent you my love. I sent you my care because I want you to know how much I love you. Throughout this week, we've been looking at why God sent his word. I want to start with the scripture in the book of John chapter 3. I'm going to read verse 34. Then I'll read verse 27. 
of John chapter 3. The Bible says, For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. I want to read verse 27 of John 3. It says, John answered and said, You know the John? It is John the Baptist. The Bible says, And John answered and said, Oh man, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. We are looking at why God sends his words. Why does God send us his words? He said, for whom God had sent. So God sent someone and that person had to speak the word of God. He said, for whom God has sent, speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. He giveth not his spirit by measure. He pours out his spirit to back up the word he sent. I want to begin by the beauty, looking at the beauty of the word that God sends to men. Why does God send us his word? It was John the Baptist describing this when he was asked. Look at the one that was Jesus at the time. They said the men are going to him. And, Paul, and John said, he must increase, but I must decrease. He began to mention something very clearly that Jesus was sent with the word of God. And he is the one that the word of God said that he is the word that became flesh. God sends his word to you and to us. He sends his words to you. He sends his word to me. He sends his word to mankind so that we can hear, so that we can know, so that we can be without excuse. There is no way we can know the mind of God if we don't hear the word of God. And what is the beautiful thing about it? He said, he that is sent of God, speak at the words of God. We're going to be trusting God as, throughout this week as we look at the reason why God sends his word. What is the word that God sent expected to fulfill in us? The word that God sends, what is it supposed to come? Jesus came to the world and began to see the light. He began to, the Bible says that we saw the light. Those that sit in great darkness have seen a great light. He is the light. Of the word. When he came he said the light of God. Has come to earth. And when we speak the word of God. There is this understanding that makes us to walk out of darkness. It is the word of God that began to explain to us. That he, God loves us. He wants to save us. He wants to deliver us. Why is God sending his word to you, especially in circumstances and situations? Why is God sending his words? If God does not send his word to you in the situation you are in, you will be in darkness. You will not be able to understand. Sometimes a situation comes upon us and we are wondering, what is God's will for us in this? The word of God made it very clear to us that God does not wish for anyone to perish. He longs for us to come to repentance. I want to read the book of Proverbs chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 1 to verse 5. The Bible says, Does not wisdom cry? And understanding put forth his voice. The Bible says, she standed in the top of the high places by the way in the places of the plain. Verse 3 says, She cried at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in, at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call. 
and my voice is to the sons of men. Oh, you simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, wow. Be ye of an understanding heart. Why is God sending his word? To men as ignorant and as foolish as we are. I remember Jesus praying with his disciples and for his disciples. He rejoiced in the spirit and said, yes. Father, now they believe that you sent me. I have given them thy word that thou hast given to me. And they have believed that you sent me. God speaks and sends his words to us so that we will understand what his plans are for us. Now look at where he's crying out as wisdom in the book of Proverbs. It's way back in the Old Testament. The Bible says, does not wisdom cry? This word of God is being proclaimed. It is like crying out and understanding put forth her voice. There is this voice of God that speaks persistently to the hearts of sinners. He speaks until men come back to the Lord. This voice is still speaking and he has commanded us. Speak forth my word to the dying world so that men can be without excuse. Look at what he said. Does not wisdom cry? Is a question. Yes, wisdom is crying out to men. He said, verse 4, Unto thee, O men, I call. And my voice is to the sons of men. This is the word that God speaks forth to men. He speaks his word. The word of God said, the word of God is a lamp unto my face. So it can show you like a lamp. A lamp shines forth its light. He said, the word of God is a lamp unto my face. He now said, it's a light. A light unto my path. That light is what illuminates our path. Without the clarity of the word of God, we, sh we will not be able to see clearly. It is because of the light of the word of God that made us to recognize the tricks of the devil against us. When Jesus appeared, he began to describe the activities of the devil. He began to say that anyone that, that, that follows the lies of the devil will enter into his bondage. He said that anyone that is sinning is a slave of sin. That is something very interesting where we noticed where he was speaking to the Jews. He said, you people that have heard my word and that have believed. He said, if you continue in my word, that same word that God sends. He said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. God sends his word so that we will continue in his word. And then he says something and you will know the truth. When the word of God comes, truth is released. And every lie that is around us will lose their hold. He said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth. And then he says something, and the truth shall set you free. Something very interesting and remarkable in that scripture. The Jews told him, we are free. We are not subject unto any man. We are not bound to any man. Jesus now began to explain to them. He said, when a man commits a sin, he is a slave of that sin. And the slave have no permanent residence in that house. He now began to say, if the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. That is why God sends his word. He sends his word for us to be illuminated, for us to understand, for us to see the light of God. And the word God sends to us, he does so many things in our life. 
the word of God that is sent to us makes us to see the way God sees. The word of God that God sends to us makes us to understand. The word of God that God sends to us makes us to see clearly. Oh, this is actually what the devil is working out in my life. My prayer for you is that the words that God is sending your way, even the previous words God has ever spoken to you and the words he is speaking, it is called the proceeding word. He is always speaking. He speaks into our life. He speaks into our circumstances. He speaks into our situation. I want to read one more scripture concerning the word of God. And I'm reading from the book of Psalms. Psalm 107 verse 20 is a popular scripture. Psalm 107 verse 20, the Bible says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. This is one of the reasons why God sent his word. The Bible says he sent his word. Remember that word is a person. The person of the Lord Jesus. He is the word. By him all things we are created. He sent his word into our life. The Bible says this word brings healing to us. Now the healing goes beyond the physical healing. It is the healing of our mind. Some of our minds are battered. Some of our minds are, 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 have been defeated because of repeated malhandling of the devil. Praise the name of Jesus. He said, he sent his word and delivered them. He healed them and then he delivered them from their destructions. Several destructions that the enemy has upon the lives of men the word of god is sent to heal and to deliver we are trusting god that all that god meant for his word to do in our life will be accomplished and in case somebody is not finding it could not understand the essence of this word that god sends i remember several years ago when the Lord was explaining to me the details of my destiny, he speaks, my word is what you have been called to proclaim. He speaks his word and that is what he said I should hold on to. I remember being scared. I remember like, Lord, what am I going to do with these words? You told me this. You have told me that. Then I didn't understand the magnitude of the word of God. And I remember one of the days in my crying out in prayer. I heard. I had an encounter. Where the Lord began to explain to me his word. Now he was speaking to me. Using his words to describe his word. He told me he said daughter. My word has what it takes to bring itself to pass. The word of God is a living entity. The word of God is the power of God. The word of God has the ability to go and to come. The word of God when it is sent. The word of God said in the book of Isaiah. My words that I I sent to you cannot return to me void. It will accomplish all the things that I please. And that is the word of God. Why does God send us his word? Why is God sending us his word? And in your life in this season, why is God sending his word? And throughout this week, we're not be looking at the days and we are trusting God. That the essence of the reason why God sends his word will be accomplished in our life. Now I want to deal with the things in our life that are negative words that God has not spoken. The truth is that there is power in words. Even the idle words of men have some level of influence. That is why the Bible says we should be careful of our words. Because we will give account of every idle word. There is no word that is meaningless. Even idle words has impact. And that is why when we release it out of our mouth, we are going to give account of it. And we are now going to address 
words that has been spoken into our lives and words that we have spoken ourselves. Some of us are bound because of the words that we have pronounced over us. Some of us have parents that have spoken ill words into our lives. Some of them because of lack of discipline of themselves when they are provoked they release words and those words are actually powerful do you know that god has given us the weapon to counter every negative word or pronouncement that is released upon us for the word of god to be effective in our life there are things we need to consider and i'm trusting god that throughout this week we will understand the beauty of why god sends his word in the case of situations of dryness situations of confusion situations where men are trapped god sends his word and things are happening Things are created. New things are baited. And what about the negative things that have been spoken? You can learn how to reverse them. In case you are struggling with something, you don't know what it is. In case you, are, you, 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 you confess the word of God and you, 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 it seems as if you are still weak. Now, the word of God is faultless. The word of God is powerful. But if there are negative pronouncements, especially the things you have said by yourself, you need to renounce them. You need to bring yourself to the point where you say, everything I have ever believed that is contradictory to the word of God, anything that I have heard or I have knowingly or unknowingly, consciously or unconsciously come to believe that is not in line with what God said, I renounce them, I neutralize them. By so doing, you position yourself for this same word God sends to you. To be effective in your life. Why God sends his word to us. And the impact the word is supposed to make in our life. I remember people. Especially those that Jesus healed. Most of them he didn't even touch them. Like the case of the ten lepers. You know the other leper. That said Jesus. If thou wilt thou can make me clean. And Jesus said, I will be thou clean. The Bible says he touched him. He spoke and he touched. But there are those whom he didn't even come close. Like the ten lepers. He told them, go and show yourselves. And that word went ahead of them. As they were turning to go on their way, they were healed. God sends his word in case there is any part of you that needs the healing of God. The most important healing is being healed from the disease of sin. Sin is a disease. Sin is an infirmity. You can be healed. If there is any practice of sin in your life, you can trust God to heal. He sent his word, Psalm 107. Verse 20, he sends his word and he heals and delivers us out of our destruction. You mean talk about our destruction? Someone involved in drugs is going the way of destruction. God can save. He sends his word. Someone that have discovered that they have some disease, infirmity, sicknesses, illness. He sends his word, he heals. So many people are really needing healing from disappointments. They are really needing healing. They are healthy physically, but damaged inside. God can send his word and he can heal. I am trusting God that this week he will locate the places in our life that needs healing and sent forth his word and he us. we need the healing of god we need the wholeness of god and it is descending forth of the word of god that heals us this morning can we clear out every negative word 
that has ever been spoken. I didn't have time to bring out this scripture, but I'm going to quote it. This scripture is the one we saw in the book of Deuteronomy concerning a man called Reuben. Reuben received the pronouncement of condemnation. Both him and his descendants because of the consequences of what he did. When his father Jacob pronounced him, you are the excellency of power. You are the excellency, the beginning of my strength. But unstable as water, you shall not prevail. We didn't see any blessing. We didn't hear any blessing that was pronounced upon Reuben. But we saw when the servant of God, Moses, came up in the book of Deuteronomy. He was now blessing the tribes of Israel. When he came to Reuben, he said, Reuben, thou shalt live and not die. Let not your men be few because he discovered that when this negative word comes into a man's life, he begins to be reduced. But the word of God locates a man to increase you. Now, if you understand this, it doesn't matter where you are or the situation. The year is coming to an end. I don't know what reduced you. I don't know what reduced your strength. I don't know what might have reduced you in whatever. The word of God is here to build you up. I remember the commendation that Paul commended the church. He said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up. Hallelujah. This word of God can build you up. He can make you to have an inheritance among them that are sanctified. And we want to pray. You're going to ask the Lord first and foremost, Lord, every negative word that is hanging over my life, pronounced by my father or my mother or by any witch or wizard or anything that is a negative word. Father, we declare today in the name of Jesus that those words lose their relevance by the authority in the word of God. The Bible says, who is he that spoke and it came to pass when the almighty God has not commanded it. I want to let you know that what God says stands is to persist every other pronouncement and as we pray this morning, I make a Decree today that every negative word that has been spoken that is still effective in your life, even though you are a child of God, today those words they lose their relevance in the name of Jesus. And like Moses that appeared and began to release blessing upon Reuben, yes, Reuben deserved all the curses that the father gave to him. But when Moses appeared with the unction of the word of God and the anointing upon his head, he began to bless what was supposed to be cursed. And today, I want to let you know that God is releasing good words. It doesn't matter what has been speaking or working against you. God sends his word to make you whole. He sends his word and heals them and delivers them from their destruction. In case your life is already tilting towards destruction, the word of God is speaking right now over you. He said you shall live and not die. He said he sent his word and his bread to build you up. I pray right now the building up of the places where your world seems to be crumbling down, where your health is crumbling, where your finances are crumbling. God speaks to situations. He speaks to the fish. The Bible said he speaks spoke to the fish and the fish vomited out Jonah I tell you something he can speak to situations he commanded Peter said go Peter take your hook and go to that river put it there the first fish that will come out open the mouth to receive coin I tell you something the golden coin that was brought out from that fish I can't explain the details of it but that is how the word of God is in your situations they needed to pay the taxes and that was what Peter got to pay for him and for Jesus. There comes a time when circumstances and situations seem to overwhelm you. You need the word of God. And I declare in this season, every word of God you need will be coming your way. And as this year is coming to an end, you shall not be put to shame in the name of Jesus. It is a new day. It is a new week. And we declare in the name of Jesus, as you go forth into the day, the word of God will go ahead of you. He will make crooked place is straight in Jesus name. We will continue throughout this week to talk about why God sent his word. 
It's very important for us to know that and know how to lay hold on this word of God. Remember, Jesus defeated the devil by the word of God. You may need to fight that battle as you find out what the word of God said and resist the devil in your life and go forth as God continues to give us life. We wrap up this year with the power of the word of God that he has given to us and we proceed into the coming year empowered with the word of God. I pray for strength for you that is hearing me. I pray the Lord to empower you. I pray the Lord to strengthen you. I pray the Lord to show you the revelation of the word of God in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his countenance to shine upon you until I come your way again tomorrow by the special grace of God. Keep on living by the word of God. Nothing will defeat you. No power of darkness will overwhelm you. No enchantment of the wicked one will come near you. The Bible says there is no enchantment against the people of God. There is no divination and that goes for you. According to this time of the year, it shall be seen. Say, see what God has done and so shall it be in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, have a beautiful day in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 